All right, we're ready to bring you our next uh, topic now, financing the 2017 budget. Yes, that budget has been tagged, Budget of Recovery and Growth. It was approved by the National Assembly on May the 11th. Uh, the budget size was increased from 7.3 trillion naira proposed by the executive to 7.44 trillion naira by the legislature. In the budget passed, 1.8 trillion naira is for debt service and fiscal deficit is 2.35 trillion naira. 4.4 uh, 4 billion is for statutory transfers and 177.5 billion naira is for sinking fund for maturity bonds that is. Also, uh, 3 a trillion naira is for recurrent expenditure and 2.2 trillion naira is for capital expenditure. Now, for debt servicing, 1.66 trillion naira is allocated and 178 billion naira is for sinking funds to retire uh, maturing loans. Now, the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udoma, Udo Udoma, says the federal government will issue new oil licenses as part of efforts to explore new streams of revenue to fund the 2017 budget. According, According to him, a total of 10 trillion naira is um, expected as revenue for the 2017 fiscal year, about 5 trillion naira is expected to be generated from the sale of crude oil alone. And non-oil revenue will take and rake in about uh, 5 trillion naira. Oil is expected to produce the largest chunk of cost of revenue as usual with expected net income from oil and gas sources for this year pegged at uh, 5.03 trillion naira. The sum of 61 billion naira is projected from margin liquefied natural gas, and the sum of 5 trillion naira is a targeted revenue through the non oil sector for 2017. Yes, indeed. And of that amount, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, is to generate 3.76 trillion naira for the fiscal year. The non oil revenue comprises company income tax, value added tax customs and excise duties, and federation account levies. Uh, FAC. Now, Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshun, says the federal government hopes to fund the budget with a total borrowing of 2.35 trillion naira as the budget uh, deficit. Now, from the total new borrowing plan, the sum of 1.25 trillion naira is to be sourced domestically, while uh, 1.07 trillion will be sourced um, externally. Now, Aki Omishade is our guest this morning. Uh, he's a financial analyst. Good morning, and it's good to have you join us via Skype from Abuja. Uh, good morning. I'm actually in Lagos. How are oh, you today? Okay. Thank All you. right. Uh, it's good to know that then you're, you're closer than we thought. Uh, now, I, I wonder what your views are on uh, some of the projections uh, for funding the 2017 budget. Maybe we should, um, you know, get your thoughts on what you feel about the budget in general. First off. Well, you know, I was with you some, some months back and we were discussing this budget and some of the issues that I raised then was that, is this a real budget? I had my questions about the budget. Now, the budget is coming almost um, five, six months after we, we all studied it. So that means we are, we are catching the, the bus that has left the station or the train that has left the station. Most countries have, have implemented their, or have started implementing their budget from November last year. We are just passing hours into, into, into being um, five months into the year. And don't forget that the president has to still sign up this appropriation bill. So, the 2016 budget is still what is effective as at date. The 2017 budget is still on paper. Um, the 2017 budget that we have presently has had an increase of over of, 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 of over one billion naira that will one trillion naira that will come in from the expenses of the National Assembly. Why is that? This is a budget that is based on borrowing. The interest rate on borrowing will send your generation and my generation to, and other and the generation yet unborn into repayment schemes. So, if you I've looked at the figures that you've put up on how the budget will be financed, but how can you finance what you are not producing or what is not likely to generate income? 
Are you not digging a bigger hole for yourself? That is the question. If you, if you read what the, the leader of the NSC said yesterday, this is a budget of hope, but is it a realistic budget? I doubt not. Uh, if you look at the income from oil revenue alone, this is based on Nigeria producing 2.2 billion million barrels per day. We are not producing up to 2 million per day. We produce 1.44 million per day since January. So there's a shortfall of over 800,000 barrels per day. How do we bridge the shortfall? Now, okay, hold on, please. Let's, let's get them one after the other mm -hmm. so we have right. a better understanding and better analysis. You talked on, right. on, on, on the financing the, the deficit through borrowing. Should we stay on the deficit now and, and talk about the borrowing before we move to the oil revenue? Now, okay. you, you understand mm -hmm. what we have, the huge, the huge debt we have now is running into trillions of naira, yes, really, yes. as we speak, both uh, domestic and, and external, if so much so that the World Bank has warned that we should stop borrowing. We may have the capacity to repay, and, or you may, you may have capacity to look at it in terms of your GDP and say, okay, fine, what you're borrowing is not much, but in terms of repayment and interest on, on, on such loans, it might be, it's, it's a bad idea, that's what the World Bank says. And look at the deficit that you're going to take a borrow to, to finance this year, which is about 2.2 or 2.8% uh, of the GDP. Let's focus on that. All right. Just like I said, and I agree with you, and I agree entirely with the World Bank, we are borrowing so much, the capacity to pay back is actually not there. When we borrow so much at so much interest rate, uh, at such a high interest rate, whatever receivables we have, we are receiving, or we are expecting, is going back to fund the borrowing. We, the amount we are borrowing locally, the interest rate locally is actually very high. The interest rate from external borrowing is actually high. If you look at the percentage of the borrowing compared to the budget, it's 33 percent. So what are we talking about? The figures are just not right. The, do we need to borrow so much? That's one. The next question is, what are we borrowing to spend on? If you look at the budget, if you look at the present budget, as it were, the amount we are borrowing on infrastructure to, to develop infrastructure is not as much as what we are using to pay NAS. It's not what we're using to pay, to pay for current uh, uh, expenditure, recurrent expenditure. So you see, we are borrowing to spend on consumables, as I call it, but we are not borrowing to develop. If you say we were borrowing to build roads, to build hospitals, to build airports, then yes, it will repay itself over time. But we are borrowing to spend on what we are consuming. That is why everyone is saying, why this borrowing? Why this high level of borrowing? And then you have the financing of the borrowing. It's huge. It's a huge burden. By the time we pay out, what do we have left to spend on infrastructural development? Power sector needs assistance. Agriculture needs assistance. Manufacturing needs assistance. We, we've sold a lot of things in January to date. We had the bonds in, in the United Kingdom we sold. Everybody, I ask myself, where is Nigeria getting these dollars that we are pumping into, into the banks? Because we sold Let me put bonds. you on hold if uh, you would allow me, uh, of course, uh, breaking it down for us how the 2017 budget is to be financed. Uh, stay with us. There's more to come on TVC Breakfast. All right, thanks for remaining with us. A smaller um, committee has been set up by the National Economic Management Team uh, led by Acting President Yemio Shibajo. Of course, the, the, their job is to look at ways of funding the 2017 budget. Uh, our guest is Aki Omishade, financial analyst. So, of course, we know all the views, your views especially, about um, the budget. But going forward in practical terms, beyond FIRS targets of 3.76 trillion uh, 
of course, oil and non-oil, five trillion, five trillion each, and all of that. What are the practical ways you think the 2017 budget can be funded realistically? Well, realistically, the only way we can fund it is well, it's not it's not going to be popular. But it's to raise taxes, is to ensure that there is better administration of taxes by the FIRS. There's better administration of the receivables from in, no, oil and non-oil income. Uh, for example, which country, which serious country will have federal roads that is toll free? So if you look at those areas, the, that will be areas that might not be, that the, the citizens might not feel the, the squeeze to fund the, 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 the budget. Look at, for example, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The government is spending so much to rebuild it or and put it back in shape, but it is free. You have so many haulage trucks on that road damaging it. You should pay ad valorem. You know, um, VAT is supposed to have been increased. Was it has been, uh, VAT tax has, is meant to have been increased. It's now likely to be increased in 2018. That's how we can fund it. Um, income from all revenue there is a, there, that is subject to whether OPEC will allow us to continue raise, uh, uh, producing at the level which we are producing. Would we have the same benchmark of $50 down the line towards the end of the year? I am not sure. Shell, oil, shell gas producers are always watching the market. So those okay. are the areas that we might be able to fund it. Companies okay. income you, you've Excellent. given us a general overview of, mm -hmm. of the solution. Let's try and pick one there, one after the other and mm -hmm. see how we can uh, widen the discussion. Now, stay with tax. You remember right. uh, 2016, there is a deficit of up to a three trillion naira coming from the tax office. What mm -hmm. can we do differently? Well, you now you're asking a very wider question as, as to what can we do differently. First of all, we need to go back to basics. How many of us are registered for tax mm -hmm. in Nigeria? How many companies are actually paying tax in Nigeria? And the only way we can get that is if we have accurate data. How many of us actually pay excise taxes? How many motorists actually pay the, the um, estimated or the calculated tax on putting their cars on the roads? How many of us actually pay those indirect taxes that we are meant to be paying? So you see, if we are talking about taxes and creating those loopholes, we must have accurate data. Mm. And without accurate data, you cannot trace where the loophole is. So as I said, if you look at the number of companies in Nigeria, how many actually pay companies in income tax? How many actually pays for the, into the pension fund? How many actually pays into PAYE? So you begin to see that the problem is not just the FIRS. The FIRS will need the data to work against. And that is why I said we, it's a wider issue. We need a, a reformed data acquiring system where we all know that, OK, every individual is, re is registered at a certain age to pay tax once he receives income. There is okay. what we call the black economy. There's so many registered companies, individuals in the black economy, that yes, everybody complains, but when you ask, have you paid tax? That's where the conversation ends. Absolutely. So, now, yes. Akiyomi Shade, let, yeah. me, let me bump in here then very quickly, still staying on the issue of tax. Uh, the FIRS yeah. is hoping to bring in some 10 million taxpayers into the fold. Now, it, it's almost like a chicken and egg situation. Which one comes first? Tax? But people need to be employed to pay tax. So what, is the, what are the fundamentals yeah, that salaries. need to be in place uh, for FRS projections, well, $3.76 trillion for the fiscal year, uh, to actually become reality? Well, the, you said it's chicken and egg. I, I will seem to agree. But first of all, the, to make it easier for us all, we have the census data. That's a starting point. Everybody from the, if, once you become an adult from the age of 16 or your workable age, you should be responsible for tax. The, com, the Corporate Affairs Commission is, has the data of all the companies in Nigeria. The FRS can work with the 
with the Corporate Affairs Commission to get a listing of all the companies. Have we, do we have tax inspectors that can go into every company or write to every company and say, within 30 days, can you show us proof that you, have, you are up to date with your taxes? Look at our ports. Our ports. The, the money is coming in from import duties. Where is it going? Do we have accurate data of how many, how much imports that we've had, how much was raised as import duties or export duties, excise duty? Those are areas that, as I said, we need data. And if we don't start, we just will not get the data. We mm. need everybody has to register. Now, everybody carries a national ID card now. That's where we can begin to have interagency sharing of information and data. And once we have the interagency sharing of information and data, it is easier to know that if I escape from one agency, yeah. another agency has my information. Listen, how many cars in Lagos, for, for instance, are actually registered, have very accurate, current vehicle license documentation? Hmm. All right, Aki. Okay. The plug hole that we need to plug. Okay. Aki, the government has also made arrangement to finance this budget through looted funds, recovery <laughs> of looted funds, some coming from the Swiss government, mm -hmm. some they say they have in cash already, some they say they intend to get from uh, uh, looters. Yes. But What's then, your take on this, that? The, the, the recovered looted funds, there's been a cry that let us tell us how much has actually been recovered. Mm. You and I don't know how much has actually been recovered in total. Now, when this money is coming, we will now know whether we actually need to borrow or not. When we don't even know how much. Okay, these looted funds, where have they been kept so far? Have they been kept in sovereign wealth funds that it is regenerating income for us, which we could use to finance the borrowing, or we might not even need to borrow? And don't forget, some financial, internationally rated financial institutions are actually saying Nigeria does not need to borrow. All we need to do is to tighten the belt and make realistic projections and use of what we have as of now. You mentioned looted funds. There's, there are challenges in the, in the courts regarding some recovered funds. Mm -hmm. Headline news have been made about looted funds. Yeah. 90 billion, 90, 90 billion, 90 million dollars from Mrs. Desiani. Is it true? Where is it? You know, so there, when you say looted funds, it's quite ambiguous and it requires uh, us to drill down into the final details, the granular details of that information. And I ask, where are, where, where have these monies been kept? Yeah. Which bank is holding them? So are many questions there. So many questions begging for answers, of course, Aki Umishade. Now, uh, recently, the finance minister, Kemi Adoshun, uh, said that uh, last year, yes, it, it is clear that Nigeria did a lot of borrowing, uh, but it, this year, it, it's, it doesn't plan to do much of that. But with a 2.35 trillion naira uh, bo borrowing uh, projected for the budget deficit, uh, what do you make of this, really? And then some experts like yourself have said, look, let this borrowing be private sector driven. I agree. I agree. The, the government cannot, we have to move away from the government running the economy so that whenever the government is, is broke, then the economy goes broke. When the private sector is running the economy with well thought through plans and policies in place, then the government is just sitting there enjoying the fruits of the labors of the private economy the man on the street, the micro and the macro economies will grow. Foreign investors will come in. But when everything is tied to the government, that is where the problem is. Now, you talked about what the Minister for Finance has said. Yes, I, do, I don't agree. And that is how I started my introduction. The, 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 econo the, the private sector should fund the economy. If the private sector is funding the economy, do you think manufacturers will go and obtain interest loans with interest rates of 27%? I don't think so. It will be competitive rate. It will be used wisely. It will not be used on spending. It will be used on recreating wealth, regenerating capital. So, of course, the private sector is crying out loud that let us have a free hand in doing this business. 
Mm. Okay. All right. Does that argument also cover the recovery of assets? That's also part of uh, uh, a way of financing this budget, according to the government. Mm. Uh, people have argued that government should hands off some of these assets and let the private sector manage them. Just asking. Yes. I mean, I agree. Okay. You said private sector. Do we have data about? Uh, do we? Sorry. You said a uh, recovered asset. Do we have? the data about the recovered assets. Some of these recovered assets, do they have charges against them? Do we need to sell some of them? Do we need to lease out some of them? Uh, you see, these are questions that, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's painful discussing these issues at times because it's, it's there for all to see. We have a lot of recovered assets. If you go around the world, there are assets that the federal government has recovered that I have information about that is just wasting away not even from not even today but for some years now they're just wasting away and some because if you don't use it nobody knows where it is someone yeah. will take it over by the time nigeria wakes up it's already in, the, in, an, in other people's hands yes wow. recovered assets are good if we can get hold of them some of them we don't need to keep hold of them sell them off Okay. Because you can hold of them, you need to maintain them, and that is extra cost. Akio Misha, Dave, financial analyst. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your insights and, of course, your time. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, of course, government is looking at non-oil revenue too. Uh, Five trillion naira with a, a, an economy that's not exactly diversified. I wonder where, how realistic that is. that's where the custom comes in. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year, they lost quite a lot of money into trillions yeah, of dollars. Yes, indeed. How yes. will they make up for that this year? That's yeah. the question. Ah, so many questions left unanswered. We've answered as much as we can <laughs> through our guests, of course. That's how the show has been this morning on TVC Breakfast. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. I am Ngozi Alebu. And I am Busolami Jumashe. Bye for now.